So what you've seen is where we've been for the last eight years, um, and a whole bunch of people, some of whom are in this room, to come up with this common standard. Um, standard came out two years ago, I think the anniversary is in the next week or two. Um, so March the 1st. There you say, day we'd say, uh, Welsh day, is it? <laughs> okay, so it, it's, it has been out a while, and we're treading a fine line, if I'm honest, in the deployment section around saying, great, we're making progress, but we're not there yet. And that's the honest answer in, in, in terms of our uh, sort of spiel. So I'm going to take you through um, the good news, as it were. Um, am I going the right way? I'm not. Okay. Um, so here's the timeline. Uh, it came out, March. Um, Different people started at different times in terms of uh, doing the gap analysis, understanding the bits that they were, they were missing. Um, target date was uh, the first of uh, this year. Uh, and then ongoing compliance. So that, I mean, you've seen, you've seen that. All of those people uh, have incorporated um, uh, 3100 uh, as part of their requirements in Sabre, and I own Sabre for us. Um, you know, pick a number, it's 90 plus percent of Sabre is, uh, is 3100, which I hope is good news. Um, again, you know, we're trying to do our best, as you've heard many times this morning, to help each other in this journey. Um, I joined ASQ, taking over from Ian over there a couple of years ago, and it's strange when you first enter a room with GE, Pratt & Whitney, and Saffron and & Co, and go, oops, what's this? But, you know, as, as Sebastian said, quality trumps competi our, com our competitive nature, and that's what we've been trying to do. So everything you see uh, that, that Helen Co presented it's, it's available for you to use, and you know, it's freebies. You don't get too many of those in this world. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of how um, the, the involvement of the, of the global community, our supplier community, uh, uh, has, uh, has taken off in the last couple of years in this. So you know, a bit of data. We like our data. So th these are the downloads from the AESQ website of the, of the reference manuals and the standards, etc. So 20, 21, 22, 23. As we said, the standard came out a couple, uh, a couple of years ago. Everybody got serious about it then. January, uh, already at 3,500, so multiply that 12. Um, when it, th these numbers all look good, and, th and they are. Um, I always try to flip it around and go, well, how many should they be? You know, I don't know how many people there are in, in, in our supply chain, a million. But I'm running to a million yet. So how many do we need to involve? So all, all we can do is continue to encourage you, want to access this, but encourage people in your company. I think one of the big questions we need to ask in AESQ and how we help is, it's 90% quality people. But 90% of the work, no disrespect, gets done by people not in the quality function to get to zero defects, the DEs, the MEs, the purchasing guys. So how do we get that horse to water? Is, is, is our challenge not just for, for me, but for everybody in this, in this room. Um, and I know this is a busy slide, um, and, but this is trying to um, lay out the... Um, history of the webinars <clears throat> that uh, different teams have done, different um, subject matter interest groups as we call them, uh, and, and uh, supply forums, so you've got FMEAs and you've got um, uh, pick, pick others, human factors, etc. And, and these bars indicate who attended and then who watched afterwards. The blues attended, watched afterwards. So and then that's the, the message here is that these things are available to you at any time. You know, the, good, the goodness, and we've all learned through COVID, you can work from home and watch this stuff at your own leisure, as they say, across the pond. Um, so, again, encourage you to do this. This stuff ain't going to change day in, day out. The fact you've missed it because you're new to role or joined a new company um, doesn't mean you can't go back and watch and ask others to work. But we will continue to build, and we're trying to build on stuff that you tell us is important. The, the, the things you're struggling with will go, okay, there's a brick in the wall that's missing. How can we best plug that one? Okay. And then this is the community of practice. So again, this is really important. Um, I'm not on any social media, but when I took this job on and joined the ASQ, I, was, I was felt obliged to go onto LinkedIn. So, so say hello to me on LinkedIn. And it's not a competition. Uh, but there are lots, all the, the communities of practice are on LinkedIn. It's a good way of engaging with... Um, uh, the, as we call them, the SMIG groups, asking questions, etc. These things only work if, if we're all active in them, otherwise they sort of die on the, on the vine, don't they? So again, I'd encourage you uh, to, to get on that, even if you're not IT, social media literate like, like me here. Uh, again, it shows that you know, we, we started here, 2022, we want to continue to progress that. We really need not how many there are, 3,000, but we need 30,000 people on, on these things. Right? And you're all passionate about 
the subjects that uh, that you are passionate about, whether it's human factors, whether it's ABQP, well, there's a place for you. Don't worry, you're not a geek. There is a place for you among these communities. Go join, say hello, ask you questions, and uh, and uh, collaborate to your heart's content. Uh, <clears throat> newsletters again, you know, same, same, same old, same old. So more and more people. What do we want that number to be? Difficult to say. Um, but uh, Becky over there sends these things out, and they'll keep you up to date with the latest thing that uh, AESQ is doing, publicized events, webinars, etc. Uh, and what we have tried to do before these supplier forums is send out a survey uh, to the newsletter um, audience. Um, and, and we've done four to date over the last, uh, last year and a bit to give us a view of how is deployment going. And, it, and it's a glass half full, glass hem half empty picture. Uh, and Jim is gonna take you through where we are on that. Now it's me again. So apparently every cough today is going to be attributable to Jim, so don't feel bad about coughing out there. Uh, we, as was on said, okay, yes, we're seeing some good movement in the, in the industry, but we're not there yet. So the survey gives us a snapshot, <clears throat> our fourth snapshot, of exactly what's going on in the industry and where our supply base is in the implementation of 13,100. <clears throat> All right. So the first slide, we just wanted to highlight, I and mean, this is again supporting the idea that the AESQ has um, worked well together to address our supply base. This is the question that we had on, basically we had all of the 10 members in the survey, and we asked each respondent, check off how many of these are your actual customers. And this is the plot of that data. So the average, and it's been the exact same average for the last two surveys, is every, on average, every supplier to us supplies to 3.75 of us. So three or four of our members are your customers. So when we do something like AS13,100 for one of us, you're gonna be benefiting from three others, okay? So <clears throat> that just highlights the fact that yes, we're right. Yes, we know that a significant portion of these companies are small companies. In fact, about 50% of the respondents said they were in a company that was less than 200 employees. That's our reality of our supply base. It's not all large corporations. And we know that, and that's why we gathered this information so that we can bring in some of those smaller companies into the AESQ so that we can make sure that when we write something, when we create something, it'll work for the large corporation with 40 sites around the world. It'll work for the mom and pop shop with 25 employees. We're trying our best. And that's you know basically our goal is to make sure that everybody is able to meet those requirements. <clears throat> This is a, a history, so this is basically, we've been gauging as we published 13,100, how familiar our supply base is with it. It's not a really powerful graph, but at least we see the trend is moving, okay? So the blue is good, the bottom blue is not so good. So apparently, I don't know what that is, 3% of the people that responded don't even have a copy of 13,100 yet. Well, this is the concerns for us. These are the concerns for us um, that, you know, why are these suppliers not, engaging with 13,100. We've been pushing it for two years, almost two years. Um, so what is going on there? What can we do to help? What resources do these people need to make sure that they're on board? Um, but the trend is going in the right direction, which is what we wanted to confirm. Um, where suppliers are in their deployment, actual deployment of 13,100. And again, the trend is working great. So blue organizations believe that they're actually compliant Purple is we're working on it. We've done our RM13009 self-assessment checklist. We've identified a couple of gaps, but we have a plan to close those gaps. The green is we're working on our self-assessment. So green and below is really the concerns. So why, why aren't these people already working on their self-assessment? Again, with two years we've been telling our supply bases. Each one of us has been telling our supply bases. This is coming January 1st, this is coming January 1st. But you can see, you know, uh, 60 some odd percent are actually working the process and, and about to become or believe that they're compliant. But obviously the proper trend for, for what we'd expect now. A question we've asked, uh, I think once or twice, but how confident are you? Now we didn't define what high, medium, and low is, it's just a gut feel, but 50% of the respondents felt that they had a high chance of becoming compliant. Another 40% felt medium, and we need to address and find out what we can do to help those that really have no, a low confidence that they're gonna be able to be compliant. We don't know who they are, but we will you know, try to see if we can help those people figure out 
what it is they need and what we can do to help them. Um, you'll see later on there's a training summary and there's a training booth. Um, basically, we want, we're interested in the required training. So there are two required training courses in AS13100. There's the requirements course, which is meant to provide those people that are going to be responsible for implementing the various aspects of 13,100 to understand what 13,100 is, to understand its requirements. And that's all it is. It's 10 one hour, 10 one hour online sessions and it goes through the document and explains what we're looking for in this section, what we're looking for in that section. So that's one required course. The other one is the quality foundations, which is a little bit more sophisticated um, and deals with APQP, basically the components of APQP. So these courses are um, given by the SAE. They are available through the AESQ website. Again, the first one is an online one, so you can get that at any time. The other course, the foundations course, is um, instructor-led. So they're either done on-site or they're um, or face to face, or they're done virtually. It's about, I think, two to one virtual to around the world kind of thing. And they're done around the world. But we wanted to make sure that we understood that suppliers were not only just sending one person to these courses. Okay, if you're a small mom and pop shop with 50 employees, you can probably get away with one person getting the knowledge that they need to become compliant to 13,100. If you're a multinational with 30 sites around the world, sending one person from corporate is not gonna do it. And that's why we're very pleased with the 43% of the respondents that said, no, no, we've been training people more than one per site. So we've been training what we believe to be the number of people that need it. So the message, and you're gonna hear it in the training section from June, um, is basically, you need to get going with this training. Um, these numbers aren't as high as they should be. Again, to Uzam's point, they're not as high as they should be, but at least we see that um, we, need, we are getting some movement in the training sessions. The 27, 22% that haven't done any training, again, why not? Two years we've been telling you, you need to have these training courses. Um, and really to be compliant, to make sure that you're compliant, the training course, at least the familiarization course, is the one that really helps to understand what it is the AESQ is looking for, your customers are looking for. Um, you're going to see, I mean, the reason that we have these booths around here and we have the sessions for you to, to go and talk to the SMIG experts, we ask, what are the major items that are causing you grief? What are the ones that are causing you to worry about your implementation? And not surprisingly, APQP is number one because it it's a complicated uh, activity. Human factors, because it may be new to a lot of suppliers, although it's not rocket science, it's human factors. Sub-tier management, which again is another new subject for uh, AS13100. Some of the OEMs would have had plenty of sub-tier management requirements in their individual documents before AS13100, but now we have a very clear sub-tier management, and there's a sub-tier management booth over there if you want to talk to somebody about what that means. But basically, this is uh, the response, and they're very similar to the last survey. APQP was number one, I think, in the last survey. So uh, again, we know that that's a concern. We're gonna try and develop more materials. We're gonna try and host more webcasts. There are a number of webcasts. We keep talking about our websites. There are a number of past webcasts on APQP that you can go, and they've been recorded. You can actually participate and see those, those actual webcasts. And again, these are by experts in your customers' companies. People that have been doing this particular subject for 30 years are putting together these reference materials, are hosting these webcasts. These are the people that have the knowledge that you probably can't afford to hire a, a consultant to do for you. These are the people that are gonna be you know, helpful, definitely helpful, and these are the people that help write the requirements, so there's definitely a connection there. I think last one, um, just a gauge of uh, participation with the AESQ, you know, we try our best, we get communications out. Poor Becky has to constantly send out notifications to supply base on what events that are happening kind of thing. So again, 37% of the respondents said they haven't done anything. I was a little surprised by the amount of hands that went up earlier this morning that you're all uh, on your first one. Great, welcome to the team, but um, there are all sorts of ways. And again, later on this afternoon, we're, we keep repeating ourselves. Later on this afternoon, you're gonna see exactly how, if you wanna get more involved with the ASQ, if you wanna get more involved in helping to um, create these requirements, interpret these requirements, make improvements to these requirements, there are ways for you to do it. And I think that's my last slide. Okay, so get out your phones. Um, 
Again, this is an open text. Becky? Yes. Yeah, okay, so here, it's just an option for us to gather all these in one. So how can we better help you? Okay, we'll leave this open for a little while. Please don't be shy, okay? And again, look for others having submitted a certain topic rather than repeating it, just like it, and it will start to add numbers to it and make it bigger and bigger and bigger. But, you know, we're constantly asking suppliers, small, medium, large, how can we better help you? How can we improve your ability to become compliant? And we don't just want to run out there and, and get, uh, and, you know, audit our suppliers and then find out that, oh, there's all sorts of things. We want to be proactive in it. We want to work with you ahead of time. I think what, well, while you keep tapping, I mean, what's useful to understand is to get to the next level of that. When we say trading, other than cost, which is, which, um, really is uh, something, is um, what type of training are we talking about? So I think as Helen talked about earlier, we've got the standard training of um, online training to get the requirements training, we've got three-day fundamentals training. Are we talking about more specific training? Because and we'll talk about it later, but you know, there's more specific training coming up as well. So whether it's today or at some other point, I think we have a training um, board up there. Help us understand what you mean by that. Is it accessibility to? Is it languages? Whatever. That's more like human factors. Chris, you're going to be busy. Where were you? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, we will pick that up as we go through the day and definitely afterwards. Um, I think what we are finding as we ask, ask these things is exactly what I said earlier is the granularity of that conversation just to go a bit deeper so we can help you better. 